On today's show, we have a lot to cover. We'll talk about the acquisition of Nils Lundqvist from the New York Rangers to the Dallas Stars. John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers will join me briefly on the show to talk about what Lundqvist could potentially bring to this Stars roster. We're also going to take a moment and talk about Jason Robertson being on the training camp roster, but maybe it really doesn't mean a whole lot. And then to close out, we'll kind of go around the NHL Look at some different storylines, including Nathan McKinnon's new contract, as well as three legendary defensemen retiring from the NHL. Lots of ground to cover on a Wednesday episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans, welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Wednesday, September 20. First, and whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, thank you for stopping by for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the YouTube channel. At the time of recording this, we are sitting at 699 YouTube subscribers, so maybe by the time you're hearing this, we've already crossed 700. Thank you guys for the continued support as the YouTube channel continues to grow. And if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're listening on audio only, Feel free to give us a follow there. Leave us a five-star rating or review on Spotify or Apple. If you enjoy the show, you can also also find us on social media. You can find the show at Locked on Stars on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, just search at Dane double underscore Lewis. But let's jump into today's episode First, by talking about the newest addition to the Dallas Stars roster. On Monday night, the Dallas Stars made a deal with the New York Rangers that sent two conditional draft picks in exchange uh, to New York for defenseman Nils Lundqvist, a 2023 conditional first-round pick and a 2025 conditional fourth-round pick sent back to the New York Rangers for the 22-year-old right-handed defenseman. If you want more details on the conditional side of those picks, you can check out the article on the NHL's website, on the Dallas Stars website more specifically. Um, it dives into a lot of the details that I'm not going to dive into here because um, there's a lot that goes into those conditions on those draft picks. But if you want more information on that, that is the place to do so. So want to talk more about Lundqvist than I do the draft picks that got sent, although it, it is pretty shocking to see Jim Neal trade a, you know, potentially top 10 pick in next year's draft for a guy that only has 25 games under his belt, but there is plenty of upside to a guy like Nils Lundqvist. He was actually drafted in Dallas in 2018 with the 28th overall pick by the New York Rangers, and he's maybe a John Klingberg-esque player at best. He's certainly an offensive-minded defenseman and, you know, can certainly look to contribute offensively. He does, you know, have some room for improvement on the defensive side of the ice and certainly is not the biggest guy out there on the ice. He's pretty small, um, all things considered, but he's still an incredibly gifted player, especially on the offensive side of the ice. And what's very interesting about him being added to the roster as he is officially listed on the Stars training camp roster is he is right-handed, which throws in the potential for him to possibly play alongside a guy like Miro Haskinen, who is more naturally a left-handed defenseman. That could potentially be a very dangerous defenseman duo, two guys that you know can be threats from the blue line, but you don't have to worry about a guy like Lundqvist carrying the load defensively because you have Miro Haskinen out there who is an all-world type actual defensive player, um, while hopefully we can see some offensive uptick from Miro as well. It makes things very interesting in the Dallas Stars locker room as far as the defensive lineups go. Um, I'm really excited to see what he can do, uh, and the Stars in general have a good history of acquiring former New York Rangers defensemen. I am, of course, talking about 
about Sergei Zuboff, now uh, his number retired in the American Airlines Center. But we're going to take a quick moment and talk with John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers to get a little bit more insight on the type of player that the Dallas Stars are acquiring. So let's jump to that conversation right now. Joining me now on today's episode, John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers. And John, this is certainly not the the biggest trade or move of the offseason, but one that could have big implications for both of our teams down the road. Defenseman uh, Nils Lundqvist comes to the Dallas Stars in exchange for a handful of draft picks, including a conditional first round pick in the 2023 draft that could potentially be, um, I believe, a top 10 selection, depending on how some things play out for the Stars this year. Is this a move that you were expecting to see from the Rangers? What are your overall thoughts on the move? What what kind of ran through your mind when this move went down on Monday night? Yeah, I mean, on one hand, it kind of felt inevitable just because, you know, Nils Lundqvist basically decided to go home, told the Rangers he wasn't going to be at rookie camp, told the Rangers he wasn't going to be at normal training camp, and essentially forced their hand. I mean, on one hand, I, I suppose you could say that Chris Jury was under no obligation to trade him because we saw a similar situation with, with Vitaly Krasov last season. Uh, demanding a trade, and now you fast forward a year, and he's still here, and it looks like he might be out there on opening night. But certainly, uh, you know, Drury, if he got an offer from one of the other 31 teams, I mean, that's all that it takes, right? And if he got an offer that uh, he felt was fair and about the right value for Nils Lundqvist, I think for sure he was going to pounce on it because, you know, when you've got somebody that's essentially uh, refusing to be part of your team, uh, I, I think it certainly behooves you to, you know, listen to some offers, and when you get a good one, uh, to strike. And I, I, for one, am, am thrilled that the Rangers were able to get a first round pick for Nils Lundqvist. Uh, he only played 25 games with the Rangers this past season. Um, flashes here and there, but I don't think he really exactly sent the world on fire, got sent down to the AHL. And um, to be able to uh, get a first round pick back in exchange for him, I, I think Drury knocked it out of the park with that with that trade. Absolutely. And I know a lot of people were really surprised on Jim Nils' side of things, the Stars GM to you know, trade a first round pick, not really something that he's done over, you know, his time as the general manager of the stars and not only a first round pick, but for a guy, like you said, who only has played 25 NHL games, certainly does have some upside, only 22 years old. So, you know, it's, you can't really write a guy like that off. I mean, they still have plenty of their career ahead of them, but still kind of seems like a weird move. But at the same time, if you kind of take a look at the star situation, John Klingberg is now gone, a member of the Anaheim Ducks. And the Stars really need some defenseman depth alongside Miro Haskinen, who really seems like the only sure thing on this blue line for this Stars team. Uh, a few other pieces that could contribute, but we just don't know what we're going to get. Based on the limited action that Lundqvist saw this past year, only 25 games, and just kind of what you've heard, what you've seen from him, what can Stars fans expect to see uh, with the player like Nils Lundqvist? Uh, yeah, so just to kind of take it from the top and you know give you guys as much context as possible, um, you know Gerard Gallant came in, was the new coach this past season. And, you know, under those circumstances, you think there could be, you know, a lot of roster battles, you know, going into the season because, I mean, hey, he's the new guy in town and he's learning his team and everything. But he pretty much said the only true roster battle uh, last year at this time was basically Nils Lundqvist against Zach Jones for the sixth and final defenseman spot. It ended up being that uh, Nils Lundqvist won the battle and he got to start the season, you know, on the roster for the Rangers. And... You know, I'll be honest, from what I saw from him, and again, it's a relatively small sample size, 25 games. Uh, nothing he did really kind of jumped off the page to me. And there were times where it looked like the game was just moving kind of fast on him, which is not uncommon. You know, I think he was 21 years old at the time, young defenseman, uh, young team in general. And of course, he was saddled with Patrick Nemeth as his defense partner, which is not going to do anybody any favors uh, the way that he played this past season. But yeah, I mean, you know, as Ranger fans, we've gotten used to, we've gotten a little bit spoiled because we've seen so many young defensemen basically just kind of hit the ground running. Whether you want to go back to like Adam Fox and Ryan Lindgren or some more recent examples like Keandre Miller or even Braden Schneider this past season who ended up basically taking Nils Lundqvist's job. Um, You know, there's been a lot of trial by fire for Ranger defensemen and most of them have passed it with flying colors. For Lundqvist though, again, he scuffled a little bit and you're the one big thing that he can bring to the table for pretty much any team is his ability to quarterback a power play with the Rangers. That's a little bit redundant because obviously they've got Adam Fox on the top unit. And I mean, nobody's going to unseat him, you know, Norris trophy winner uh, two seasons ago. And then you've also got other offensive minded defensemen like Jacob Truba, who plays on the second unit. Keandre Miller can slot in there as well. Um, So, you know, Lundquist got a crack with the second unit last year on the power play, but they didn't really get a lot of ice time, and that was true whether he was out there or not. So 
he never really got a chance to show one of the biggest things that he could bring to the table, that being the ability to quarterback a power play. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of unfortunate for him, but I think somebody of his skill set is more valuable to a team like the Stars or probably a lot of other teams than it is currently to the Rangers. Because like I said, there's a little bit of redundancy there. The Rangers have some good offensive defensemen, you know, even with him not being there. For sure. And you talk about the, you know, him being able to quarterback a power play that could be big for the stars going into this year, because that was kind of John Klingberg's role for the past several years. And Miro Haskinen is obviously a great defenseman, but still trying to hit his stride offensively. And hopefully, you know, a coach like Peter DeBoer, who has a history of getting some good offensive production from his defenseman, can get a lot out of Haskinen, who I would expect would be quarterbacking that first power play unit. But then maybe a guy like Lundquist can, you know, depending on how training camp goes for him, come in and you know, beyond that second unit, or at least be in contention for a role on the power play. I think that could be really interesting. And, you know, this is, we're recording this, I guess, a little after 24 hours after this trade went down and more and more Stars fans are starting to kind of realize that there's a lot of offensive upside with a guy like Lundquist, but maybe the defense isn't quite there. Just, you know, there is a little bit of a lack of size, but overall, I think this could very well be a beneficial trade for both sides. Obviously it might pay off for the Stars a little bit sooner, but, you know, you gain some more draft capital, with the New York Rangers, always, you know, a good thing to to get that. So, you know, not a huge cap hit for the Stars either as they're still looking to sign Jason Robertson. But all in all, a good deal. And I know the last time a former Rangers defenseman came to the Stars, he ended up getting his number retired uh, for the Dallas Stars and Sergei Zuboff this past season. So we're, we're just going to have to see what happens uh, over, you know, however long uh, Lundqvist stays with the Stars. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, man. I think for pretty much everybody, this is a good thing. I think for the Rangers, you know, getting a first-round pick, I can't argue with that. And uh, for Nils Lundqvist, you know, he kind of gets a fresh start, the opportunity to have a much bigger role in the Stars than he did with the Rangers. And, of course, the Stars organization themselves, uh, like you were just saying, they get a young defenseman with some upside and a little bit of a buy-low, uh, you know, op here for them. I mean, they gave up a first-rounder, but if it works out, I mean, hey, it, it's going to be great for the Stars. Um, Dane, do, I do have one question for you though. Sure. I, I think Ranger fans would be curious about this. You know, I was looking at the depth chart for the stars and, you know, it's just one website, but they had him on the second pairing, uh, alongside, I believe it was Lindell. And, um, I, I'm just curious how you see Lundquist fitting in. I mean, I know that you just got him and you're kind of, you know, learning about him and everything, but I mean, is he going to be a top four role? Is he going to be quarterbacking the top power play unit? Just kind of give us a feel for that if he could. For sure. Yeah, I, I certainly think there's an opportunity for him to be on that top four. Like, like I said, it's really kind of a, you know, a mixed bag. You have Miro Haskinen at the top and then you do have Vessel and Dell. You have Ryan Suter, who's probably going to be in that mix as well. Thomas Harley's a really probably around the same age. I think he's a little bit younger than Lundquist, but another young defenseman looking to kind of make his mark on the NHL this season. Those are the guys kind of in the mix. You have Colin Miller coming over from Buffalo, Yanni Hockenpah, uh, who the Stars got last offseason in free agency. I believe he last played for the Hurricanes. So there, there's plenty of guys in the mix. But what, what's special about Lundquist with the Stars is that he's a right-handed defenseman. And if you look at the Stars roster, almost all of the defensemen are left-handed, including Miro Haskinen. And so there's even a possibility not only could he be top four if things really go well and he really has a nice camp and has a nice preseason he very well could find himself on a top pairing with Miro Haskinen because you know he can provide a little bit of that offensive side and then Haskinen while hopefully taking a step forward offensively can be a little bit more of the you know the pure defenseman the guy that's gonna make plays on the defensive side of the ice while you know a guy like Lundquist could take a little bit more responsibility as far as trying to play make and or shoot the puck. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me. And, and like we were just saying a second ago, Dane, I, I think that, you know, again, this is one of those rare trades where I think everybody comes out of it feeling pretty good. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I mean, do you do you feel all right about this trade? I do. I, it was kind of a weird one. One, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I thought kind of the stars were, were done making moves outside of trying to sign Jason Robertson before camp. So it, it seems like a, a pretty good payoff. It's kind of weird to give up a potentially top 10 pick in next year's draft. But if, if the stars have a good year and Lundquist plays a big part in that, it's going to be hard to complain. So yeah, I, as as of right now, I do feel really good about this deal. All right. Sounds good, man. Well, I mean, hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate, you know, doing this. And uh, I know uh, the Rangers and Stars play each other uh, pretty early. I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I want to say it's like late October, the first month of the season. I think it's like a Saturday afternoon game or something like that. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, man. So, I mean, if you're up for like a full-blown crossover episode, uh, you know, I, I'd be happy to to uh, make that happen. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I know we didn't get to do one last year. So if we can do at least one this year, if not one for each game, we should uh, we should definitely do it. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, man. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, games, matchups, news, and podcasts. BetOnline is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. This is a great time to be a sports fan, and if you want to bet on sports, it's also a great time for that. The NFL season is entering its third week. We're about a month into the college football season. MLB playoffs are right around the corner. The NBA and NHL are almost back. So if you're into sports betting, this is really the ideal time of year as the four major sports are in action as well as boxing, MMA, golf, you name it. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening around the sports world. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. The Dallas Stars released their official training camp roster earlier this week featuring 61 Players, 34 forwards, 21 defensemen, and six goaltenders. Uh, and it's exciting because, really, I mean, by the time you're hearing this, Dallas Stars training camp is technically underway. Um, I know the on ice sessions don't start till the 22nd, but I believe many of the players have reported and are partaking in some off ice type tests. Um, I imagine just you know, kind of checking in, uh, maybe some physical tests, things of that nature. So camp hasn't really gotten underway, um, but I think most of the players have reported to Cedar Park and are getting prepared for the on-ice sessions that will be taking place the 22nd through the 24th in Cedar Park. But again, 34 forwards, 21 defensemen, six goaltenders, a plethora of intriguing players here at Stars Training Camp for the 2022-2023 preseason. Roster contains many names you'd expect to see, guys that are sure locks to be on the roster, not just on opening night, but throughout the entire season. Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, Joe Pavelski, Ryan Suter. Uh, we also see plenty of the young guns as well, guys that will be fighting, scrapping, clawing for a roster spot uh, with the Dallas Stars this season. Wyatt Johnston, Logan Stankoven, Maverick Bork, Ty DeLandria, Antonio Stranges, Riley Damiani, uh, and the list goes on and on. And amongst all those names is number 21, Jason Robertson. He's listed on the roster, um, but according to Matthew DeFranks of the Dallas Morning News, it doesn't necessarily mean anything right now. And he cited a time in 2019 when defenseman Julius Honka was listed on the roster for Dallas Stars training camp, but never signed to deal with the team and never took part in training camp. Of course, a guy like Julius Honka, um, less important, no offense intended, to a guy like Jason Robertson, who is set to be a potential franchise player for this organization. And training camp, you know, like I said, really is kind of getting underway today with a lot of players getting into town, a lot of guys getting ready for these on ice sessions, as well as the first preseason game at the American Airlines Center on Monday against the St. Louis Blues. And, you know, it's it's really we're, we're at that point now. That, that you want to finally get that news about Jason Robertson. All summer, we've said Jason Robertson is going to sign before training camp. Well, training camp has finally come. I mean, the on-ice sessions kick off Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. I mean, we've arrived to camp, and, you know, this really just feels like if we're going to get the news, we're going to get the news at any given time moment. And, and, you know, it's likely, unfortunately for Robo, not going to be a deal that's at, at and, you know, the eight by eight range. And he's probably wanting more than $8 million a season. As we've talked about, he probably feels that he's better than many of these players that have signed these eight by eight type deals. Tage Thompson, Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, uh, you know, it just, you could go on and on. Tim Stutzla, Ottawa Senators, the guys that we've talked about here on the show, likely the, the best case scenario for both parties as of right now, seems to be some sort of bridge deal in the three to four year range worth around six to seven million dollars. Maybe you still look to move a guy like Anton Hudobin, maybe Roddick Foxa. 
Foxa seems like a likely candidate just because of his cap hit, his age. His, you know, he's not necessarily been a great player for the Stars as of late, but he certainly does provide some value. I know some of you have even pointed out that while he's not necessarily the most productive player offensively, he's great in the faceoff circle and is still a nice physical presence to have on a checking line for the Stars. So I can't imagine the Stars, you know, are eager to move a guy like Roddick Foxa, but Anton Hudobin, I certainly do think, is on the table. Um, he is listed as one of the six goalies set to participate in training camp this week slash weekend. But at the end of the day, I think the Dallas Stars would benefit greatly from not having this storyline lingering around much longer as a potential distraction. I mean, because this is a stretch here with training camp and preseason games where the Dallas Stars need to be focusing on different things. Uh, not to say that this is going to be a distraction that holds back the team and the entire organization from moving forward, but it's certainly something that I think the longer that it plays out and the longer that it goes on, could kind of you know seep its way through the organization, potentially causing a distraction for m several people involved in the team, whether it's veterans, as much as you would like to think they don't get distracted, it very well could happen, but especially some of these young guys as well. Uh, I just think that there's better things to be working on and there's better things to be focusing on, much more interesting storylines that we really could be honing in on, like some of these position battles for roster spots with these young players. A lot of the guys I talked about, uh, Delandria, you know, Johnston, Stankov, and Bork, uh, so many guys gunning for roster spots, yet we're still here talking about Jason Robertson which is still worth talking about, but I would much rather be talking about which guy is going to crack the opening night roster and which guy is going to be going to the AHL or back to their junior clubs. Uh, and, you know, this is really a time where the Stars need to be focusing on adjusting to a new coach, a new system, uh, and starting to fine to some, tune some things so they can be ready for the start of the regular season because the Stars cannot afford to get out to a slow start this season. So the sooner they can get Robertson signed, the sooner that distraction or potential distraction is eliminated from the picture uh, and we can move on and really start to get down to the nitty gritty of who is going to actually be members on this roster on opening night and hopefully we will get the answer to that soon and we won't need to be discussing this much longer all right to close out today just want to take a trip around the nhl and cover some different storylines one of them uh somewhat pertaining to the dallas stars as one of their division rivals has re-signed one of their best players to one of the biggest deals that we've ever seen nathan mckinnon signs a new deal with the colorado avalanche at eight years worth $12.6 million AAV. Absolutely insane how much money Nathan McKinnon is getting paid. This was to be expected that he was going to get some sort of monster deal to be extended with the Colorado Avalanche. He's a key piece for this Avs team and, of course, was an integral part of their run to winning the Stanley Cup uh, this past season. He's an incredible player. You expect a guy like this to get paid this type of money and it really just makes me curious you know what kind what kind of player or which player will eventually either get this kind of money in the future or potentially break this record uh, because I believe that this is now the biggest contract currently in the National Hockey League I don't think anyone else is making really close to 12.6 million dollars a season Nathan McKinnon has certainly earned it uh, and you know even just on the Colorado Avalanche's level it makes me really curious to see the, the lingering effects of these big contracts that they have on the books over the next few seasons. I mean, Miko Rantanen is making $9.25 million a season until 2025. Uh, Kale McCarr making $9 million a season until 2027. Arturi Lekkinen is 27 years old, but he's going to be getting paid $4.5 million a season until 2027 as well. And Val Nichushkin, 27 years old as well, going to be making over $6 million a season until 2030. So they have, you know, these really good pieces that are all in their primes right now. And I think some of these guys, their primes like McKinnon, McCarr, uh, even though McCarr is still young and has the majority of his career still ahead of him. Some of these guys, their primes might start to die out a little bit and we might see a little bit of a regression um, as good as some of these players have been. And I didn't even name all of them. There's a few other guys on the roster as well, making decent money over the next few seasons. I still think the Avalanche are set to be fantastic this year, but maybe three, four years from now, what does this team look like? I think this team could look very different while still having some of these great players, but maybe not having the depth that they had last year or having the depth that they you know, would like to have to be a playoff and Stanley Cup contender over the next several seasons. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. And of course, Stars fans will have to now deal with the fact that for the next eight years, we will have to deal with Nathan McKinnon uh, for the next eight years at least. 
uh, although Nathan McKinnon still has yet to beat the Dallas Stars in a playoff series, but I digress. Moving on to some other storylines around the NHL. Yesterday, I just felt like a, you know, bang, bang, bang of three legendary, or I say legendary just because these guys played for a long time and were name stays in the NHL for quite a long period of time. But yesterday, we saw three defensemen retire from the National Hockey League. Three guys that have just been, you know, iconic in the position over the past several seasons. Zadino Chara played for the New York Islanders, the Ottawa Senators, the Boston Bruins, and the Washington Capitals for one season. Played in the NHL from 1997 to 2022. 24 seasons uh, for Zadino Chara. Absolutely insane. One of the biggest people to ever play in this league. He was massive. Many players got familiar with him uh, by just trying to pursue a puck in the Bruins zone, and then all of a sudden just getting slammed into the boards by this absolute mountain of a man. But he wasn't just a big physical force. He was also an incredible hockey player at his size. He was a Norris Trophy winner in 2009 and a Stanley Cup champion with Tyler Sagan with the Boston Bruins in 2011. Going to be so odd for people like me who, you know, Big Z has been in the NHL, I mean, longer than I've been alive. I'm 23 years old. He played 24 seasons in the NHL starting in 1997. I wasn't born until 1998. I mean, I have not known the NHL without Zadino Char, and it's going to be incredibly weird uh, to see a league where he is not playing every single night. But, I mean, 24 seasons is absolutely incredible. Wishing him all the best in retirement, as well as the second guy that retired, P.K. Subban, played for the Montreal Canadiens, Nashville Predators, and the New Jersey Devils most recently, 13 seasons in the NHL. Also a Norris Trophy winner in 2013, and also most recently, the King Clancy Memorial Trophy winner this past season for being an excellent leader both in the locker room but also off the ice as well, um, having a huge impact on the community. I think that's something that people always had to say about P.K. Subban. I mean, obviously, he was a fantastic hockey player, but also an incredible human being, a guy who was a leader for whatever team he was on. But that went beyond the ice, went beyond the locker room and was always looking to make an impact on his community and, of course, made an appearance in the 2017 Stanley Cup Finals with the Nashville Predators uh, and was actually talked you know, talked about quite a bit this offseason as one of the bigger name defensemen on the free agent market. It wasn't a huge offseason for free agent defensemen. P.K. Subban was in conversations for the majority of the offseason, especially early on, about potentially getting a new deal with a new team. But PK has decided to officially call it a career. Wish him all the best in retirement, as well as I'm sure he will continue to be um, a great human being looking to make an impact both in the hockey world as well as just, you know, the regular world that he lives in. And the last guy retiring from the NHL, another longtime season NHL veteran. Keith Yandel, a member of the Phoenix slash Arizona Coyotes, the New York Rangers, the Florida Panthers, and most recently the Philadelphia Flyers. 16 NHL seasons set the record for consecutive NHL games played this past year, currently sitting at 989 games, likely soon to be passed by Phil Kessel of the Vegas Golden Knights, who currently has 982 consecutive games played. Uh, and, and a guy like Yandel may not have any NHL awards to his name, but I think his legacy has more to do with the kind of teammate that he was, similar to P.K. Subban. And a lot of guys had nice things to say about Zadino Chara as well. But you look at you know some of the articles and stories that have come out over the past 24 hours about Keith Yandel. Many of his teammates, coaches, and guys that have worked with him over the past 16 seasons have gone on and on about the incredible teammate that he was. He was a hard worker. He brought tons of energy to every locker room he was a part of. And just a guy that you want to have in your organization. NHL organizations would kill to have a guy like Keith Yandel in their locker room just because of the type of culture that he brings along with him and just setting that record and looking back at that, you know, that night with for him with the Flyers, setting that record for most consecutive game played. Uh, a good reminder for many players in the NHL on why they play this sport, which is just to enjoy it and to have fun. Yes, it's competitive. Yes, we love the edginess of it, the fights, the, the big hits, the big goals, the competitiveness, the intensity. But at the end of the day, these are all guys that at one point fell in love with the sport of hockey as a young kid and have continued to play it from, you know, the youth level to the junior level, college, 
uh, you know, junior clubs nationally and now playing in the NHL. Uh, they're doing it because they love the sport um, and they love to have fun with their teammates. And I think that's really what Keith Yendel's career was all about. There was the longevity, but this is a guy that loves the sport of hockey. Uh, and you can tell because he played literally almost 1,000 games in a row uh, without missing, uh, which is just absolutely incredible. Um, and I don't know if we'll ever see a record like that again until Phil Kessel likely, likely breaks it this season. But that's a similar thing. Phil Kessel, uh, just another great testament to the endurance um, of one of the most brutal sports in the world that is hockey. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you guys again for tuning in, for making us your first listen every single day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. Follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis for my personal account on Twitter. Tomorrow, we will be talking all things Dallas Stars training camp, which players I'm most excited to see and which guys I think should be expected to fight and potentially make the opening night roster. Going to be a ton of fun to see how things play out in Cedar Park over the next few days. And then the first Stars preseason game is just around the corner. Monday night, 7 p.m. at the American Airlines Center against the St. Louis Blues. Going to be a ton of a fun to have Stars Hockey back in our lives, even if it is just the preseason, but the regular season also just around the corner, just over 20 days until the home opener against the Nashville Predators. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. 